Hello, Jambariki here with another edition of Helmation, a blockumentary series that chronicles the making of my student animation, Mel and the Devil's Deal, which is a stop-motion puppet project, and it follows an animator called Mel, who makes a bargain with the devil, and the consequence is that all the drawings in his studio come to life and chase after him. Now, this episode is going to focus on an event called Animatadore, a very exciting fundraising gig that happened the other week. It went brilliantly. Now, the money that ma was made from it will be going towards exhibiting my class's projects, which is very important. We need to get our work out there, we need to get it noticed, and this exhibit is going to help that. Now, I didn't get the chance to film the entire event because, well... My camcorder kept dying, it kept getting low battery nearly every 10 minutes, so I spent a majority of the night in the corner, trying to charge it, <laughs> so yeah, um, but I can assure you that it was a really fantastic night, the bands were brilliant, the cakes were amazing, they tasted really great, uh, you missed out on the cakes, seriously, if you didn't go, you missed out on the cakes, you're, gonna, you, you're not going to have a chance to taste those cakes, anyway. There was also a raffle where my parents won half of the prizes. <laughs> it was a strange coincidence. I promise you that I did not rig the raffle, I promise you! <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, I, I did, however, film everyone preparing for the gig, uh, all my classmates, but a lot of hard effort into uh, the preparation for Animatadore. So, let's uh, check it out, let's, uh, let, me, let me show you how my friends set up Animatadori. So, as you can see, they worked incredibly hard to make this event possible. Now, there are a few bands that performed on the night, including Five Leaf Nettles, Hattie Murdoch, Matt McKenzie, and the Canyon Family. I had the chance to speak to two of these performers. So, I'm with singer and songwriter Matt McKenzie. Hello, Matt. Hello there. So, can you tell me a little bit about us? Uh, well, yeah, during the day, I'm a guitar, bass and drum teacher in primary schools and secondary schools. Which is fun, self-employed, you know, it's nice. School holidays, supposed yeah. to mention those. Um, uh, so that's all right, and um, I've been playing and singing now since I was 15, writing songs since I was 15. Published back in 98, 
for a short time, which was quite nice. Um, that's about it, really. So how would you define your music work and how does it set itself apart from other people? OK, well, um, I'm, I'm not very cool and, uh, and I'm really not. And uh, most of my songs focus on the usual stuff of love and, and loss and all that kind of bump. Um, I, I think my songs are slightly different in, in the way I present my lyrics and my melody because um, I, I quite like a catchy melody. Um, I like to give people earworms if I can um, so you know maybe there's some positive stuff in there okay so out of all performances considering busking live and studio which do you prefer definitely live because I like going into a pub where I've never been before or a venue where I've never been before and play to a more discerning audience than Joe Public in the street um, and even if two or three people out of the entire room get something out of what I'm doing, then that makes me a happy guy. So how did you get involved with uh, Anna Matadori? Well, um, uh, Zoe's brother is my best friend, and I've known Zoe for a long time. She likes what I do, and she thought it would be good to have me along. That's good. Um, so, are you fond of animation yourself? Yeah, I love it. Do you have any favourite animations or animated films? Well, I, I like the um, Nick Park stuff. That, that's always tickled me, the, you know, the creature. Creature features. Com creature comfort. Yeah, creature yeah, the, yeah no, creature features. More <laughs> JJ Abrams, isn't it? Um, but uh, I, I must say, I like Zoe's stuff. Mm. Uh, I, I loved her degree stuff. Um, mm. So, yeah, big fan. Mm. Well, that's excellent. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I encourage you to check out any of Matt's work online, really. He's, he's a very talented and uh, really friendly guy. Uh, so the other person I chatted to was Hattie Murdoch, so let's check out that interview. So, I'm with singer-songwriter Hattie Murdoch. Hello. Hello. So, can you tell my viewers a little about yourself? Sure. I, I'm a singer-songwriter and artist uh, that's based in Newcastle. Uh, and uh, I write songs and I sing them, basically. That's what I do. <laughs> so, how would you describe your music? It's a bit of a mixture, really. It depends where you're, um, where you're listening to us, really. I've, um, the things I do, I work with a producer and I work with a band as well and I do acoustic stuff. So um, the stuff that you hear with the, that I do with the producer is very electronic, very rock and indie as well. Um, and that's kind of what we do in the band as well. And then when I do acoustic stuff, it's just guitar based. Um, I still try to keep it rel relatively upbeat. Um, and get people involved, not too quiet. I get a bit self-conscious when it's a bit too quiet. But yeah, so that's kind of what I do in a mishmash. <laughs> so what's your intention in a young child as a musician? Um, basically, I love my writing and that's that's what I take a lot of pleasure in. Um, and I, as I say, I've got lots of different projects and lots of different side projects. And I, I just, I love finding things um, from from quite a dark place and, and bringing it into a song and finding those sort of sort of influences to to write about. Um, so so it's kind of it's writing music that, that sort of explores that that dark side of uh, the underbelly of the world, so to speak. Are there any musicians or books, films, art, anything at all that influences your sing songwriting or your composing? Um, Music-wise, I listen to so much stuff. So. Um, I uh, listen, you know, right the way from classic. I used to be in a classic rock band quite a few years ago, all the way up to, to pop music. I, I do a lot of, I listen to a lot of hip hop and a lot of DJs, a lot of electronica music. Um, so I take influences from all over the place, and as I say, the, the, the dark side of life, that's what I really, really like to, to look at. And, Anything too joyful and too happy, and I'll stay a bit away from it, yeah. <laughs> so you like to be a bit more mature and adult? Yeah, definitely, and I think um, I've, I've been doing doing stuff in the sort of public eye, I guess, for the last maybe two and a half, three years. And at the start, I was quite young and maybe a bit naive, and, and my songs were more maybe pop based, and, and now I've kind of moved it on and hopefully sort of shaking all that off and, and really working with with the things that really inspire me so so yeah maybe a bit more mature a bit more dark yeah so as you know animatadori is to fund in an exhibit for animated shorts mm. how do you feel about animation i love it i love it um, i love the fact that you can explore such a different range of, of um, ideas and you can really pull things out the back of your mind and 
and it's again like like music and writing. You can you can really there's no uh, parameters. There's no there's no boundaries to it. You can really try and try and make things as unreal as possible, as surreal as possible, or even as real as possible, but yeah. but with a different slam. It's like living on a different plane. I love it. It's great. That's a wonderful understanding of animation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, have, do you have any favourite cartoons? Yeah. So now I'm going to say Family Guy, which you, you know, you're obviously going to kick off about. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I I remember one bit standing out. It's a Laura Marlin track. Um, and it was all done with sort of paper and shadows and that um, animation, really dark, and really just really beautiful, and, and told the story of the song in a way that could never be filmed. You know, it can never be real. And it was just, yeah, beautiful. So, so yeah, that sort of stood out for me. So, would you love someone else to animate your own music videos in the future? Love it. I absolutely love it. Um, as I say, I, I try to to write in it and, and look at things in a slightly different perspective. So, I love people to to see how they'd interpret it. And I do try to leave it open to interpretation, so I just find it interesting how how people, what people take from it, what different lines, what um, different feels to it. So yeah, I do, absolutely. Right. So look, we all have our own personal reaction. Of course, yeah. yeah. Well, Hattie, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. No, thank you. Once again, I encourage you to check out Hattie Murdoch's work online. She's, she's really lovely and a very talented woman. Um, a after a our interview, I kind of agreed that I would help direct some of her music videos in the future, so look out for those. Um, so yeah, that that's that's pretty much Animatadori in a nutshell for me. Um, that that it was just a really great night, and anyone that wasn't there really missed out. Seriously, we raised a lot of money that is going to help us fund the event, and uh, any remaining budget is going to go towards charity. So yeah, it it was great, really great, great atmosphere, uh, great people. Um, everyone got along, and like it was just oh, it's gonna it's gonna serve as a memory in my heart. It really will, and in here, it, just, it really will. So yeah, I hope that I can talk a bit more about the actual project in future episodes. But I had to really stop to talk about this event because it has a very valuable importance in the process of getting my student film made and uh, exhibited. Okay? So, yeah, um, look out for future episodes, guys. See ya.